Thanks for joining us. Tonight, you're going to see a side of the war on terror that we rarely see. Six young journalism students from the University of California, Berkeley, spent part of the last year making documentaries about other young Americans serving in the military. They weren't looking at the front lines, however. They wanted to go beyond the battlefield to find out what it's like to be young and sometimes scared and on very unfamiliar ground. The student journalists say making these documentaries not only opened their eyes, it changed them as well. We begin with our first report. It's about a rock band touring the war zone circuit and young soldiers on a much needed break from war. It was a simple idea. A story with no news peg, just an itinerary. Six U.S. military bases in five Islamic countries. 11 days on the road with Hello Dave, a rock band from Chicago, so that we could talk to soldiers. I think y'all's probably close to the first ones, females being in our tent. Let's ask some question, guys. Uh, where are you from? I'm from New York. New York. Went to school in California, born in Afghanistan. Where in California did you go to school at? Berkeley. Ber UC Berkeley. Ooh. Some smart girls here. <laughs> and, and you, same thing? Uh, I grew up in Berkeley, and then I went to Berkeley. You grew up in Berkeley, so you're a California girl. Huh? California girl. I want to back off a little bit in case that thing comes flying out of there. Welcome to the war zone circuit. First stop, Djibouti, a country in East Africa that I had never heard of before. One of the first things we noticed is that we attract a lot of attention. There's a three beer limit, 24 hour period. I probably have about 450 cases of beer which should last tonight, I hope. Thank God for the country girl. Djibouti felt like a party, a very hot party. Oh my God. This is my partner, Eliza, escaping the heat in the freezer of the cantina. The temperature can reach 140 degrees. I wish someone would knock some sense, cause you know what I need. If this is the war zone circuit, the war felt very far away. Have your bags packed, ready to board the C-130. We're going to... Our next stop is a thousand miles northeast across Saudi Arabia. We can't tell you the name of the base, but its nickname is the Taj Mahal. This is the Air Force's main hub in the Middle East. The airmen stationed here, when not laying out or getting an ice cream at the pool's Dairy Queen, fly combat missions over Iraq. When Hello Dave isn't performing, the band visits local charities, or in this case, the hospital on base. The most common surgery that comes down here from the theater is actually hernias. Cody Barker broke the record for the most hernias the hospital has ever seen. I had three hernias. Uh, yeah, it's from 50 cal, so yeah. moving it up and down, all the ammo and stuff. So. Cody's a gunner on a Humvee, stationed south of Baghdad. The gun alone weighs 72 pounds. And you realize what he does. He's the one with his head sticking out the top. Getting shot by a sniper. That's my biggest fear. Has it happened ever? Oh, we've lost quite a yeah. Snipers are a big thing over there. Big thing. You hear about it a lot and see it a lot too. Without his bulletproof vest, Cody wouldn't be standing here. Right before he left the war zone, a sniper hit him in the chest over his heart. I didn't expect to lose like certain amount of people. Cody's been hit by shrapnel over a dozen times, and he's lost a lot of guys. But he only wants to talk about one. PFC Bobby West. Or no, PFC Specialist West. He's a funny guy. Good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. West, a 23-year-old from Arkansas, was killed in Baghdad by an IED on May 30th, just days before we met Cody. It's hard. Uh, just, just a lot of it's hard. Yeah, just coming to a fob like this or a base post, uh, when you start, you have time to think about everything that you've seen and everything that's gone on. It gets to you. Yeah, it's hard. There are a bunch of kids over there, man. 
kids. I'm from Texas, the Lone Star State. I love Texas. Texas is the best. No, I'm not married. I'm single. No kids. Absolutely no kids. The Oasis is an army bar at a base down the road. At night, the club fills with young soldiers flown here from Iraq for R&R. &R. They get four days off and three beers a night. How many beers can I have? Am I going to be able to drink more than three? I think so. All right, let's go. I'm ready. How do you want me to stand? Am I good? We met an army photographer who turned 21 the day before he deployed for Iraq. I'll just be comfortable. I came here in my uh, ACU's Army Combat Uniform, uh, you know, full battle rattle. James never held a gun or a camera before he went to Iraq. Now he uses both. Right hand for camera, left hand for weapon. James has been in Iraq taking pictures for the last six months. Bernard Cooper traded the violence on the streets of his hometown for the war in Iraq. What up, world? And I just had to get away from stuff, you know what I'm saying? Stuff at home ain't too good, so. Like my mom said, either you die quicker here than you would being in the army going to Iraq. I'm from Missouri, so we bought a little grill and we go out and barbecue and drink our non-alcoholic beer and, you know, smoke our cigarettes, just, you know, a little piece of home. This soldier may have one of the worst jobs in Iraq. What everyone fears, he seeks out. I run IED sweeps. Out of, uh, we run out of Baghdad and go south for about uh, 120 miles, and we come back north. Uh, know, we've been here for about seven and a half months. We've got another four and a half before we go home. I remember I was in high school and I was in my sophomore uh, Algebra 2 class. Uh, we were sitting in class whenever the news came on about September 11th when, when the two towers got hit. And until then, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't really thought much about the military. And whenever that happened, I was like, you know, that's, that's something I want to do. We ran into Cody later. After he recovers, he'll return to Iraq. He had some advice for anyone thinking of following in his footsteps. If they want to serve their country and if they're doing it for the right reasons, go ahead. But if you're just trying to do it just to be a badass or something like that, don't. We'll have more from these troops taking a break from the action when we return. It was the moment one soldier will never forget, the first time he was shot at and the first time he pulled his trigger. That's coming up. Welcome back to our special Beyond the Front Lines. Before the break, we showed you how two student filmmakers followed a Chicago rock band across U.S. military bases in the Middle East. They weren't there to report on the music. They wanted to talk to soldiers, other young Americans, to find out what life is like in the military. The experience changed the filmmakers, especially after they spoke to one serviceman about the first time he fired his weapon at someone. It's the last night at this location, and the band is rehearsing. That's when we met Jason, who had to make do with the sound check because he wasn't going to be here for the concert. Yeah, I'm down here on R&R &R from Afghanistan for two days. I'm still kind of on edge. Loud bangs and noises, you jump a little bit. I'm a very simple man. R&R <laughs> &R is a sudden change in reality that's not always easy for them. A lot of things that stick with you that you never forget. The first time you're shot at, the first person you have to shoot at, I guess you could say. I don't know. Um, RPGs, mortars. Uh, I think the thing that'll stick with me the most out of this experience was my first IED. I just remember this loud, just boom, and your ears go, you know, started ringing, and it was there. You felt this warm air, and it just sucked all the breath out of your lungs. And it, it, it's, it's hard to explain it until you've been there, you know, to understand. But it's just, I think it's something that I'll never forget. Give me the P90. 
people as it free my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Yeah. A lot of people have forgotten we're still fighting a war in Afghanistan. Though it's not in the headlines every day, it's, it's like old news. And, uh, I mean, we, we, we have just as much going on there as it is in Iraq. Yeah, we're going back. It sucks. That was my own personal concert. I feel, I feel special. Something before I go back to, to hell. <laughs> C-17. C-17 straight shots, three hour, 15 minute flight. It's a long flight back. It's just a lot longer than coming here, trust me. Frank out. Y'all take care. Sarissa Tanner and Aliza Nadi are the journalism students behind the piece you just watched. I spoke with them earlier. Sarissa, let me start off with you. What was this ex experience like? It was amazing. Um, Different than you thought it was going to be? You know, I didn't really know what to expect. I'd never been on a military base before. We didn't know who we would find or what we would meet, so we just really set out to take the journey, essentially. Same with you, Lisa? Exactly. It was, it was pretty jarring. It was overwhelming. We had this hour-by-hour hour itinerary set for us, and then once we got there, we had no idea what to really expect. Did uh, m meeting these troops, meeting these, these young men and women, I mean, did it change the way you view the war on terror? It totally re-changed my definition of what I think of as courage. It, um, you know, it's not sort of about these real macho guys. Really what it was is these very young, very vulnerable people really enduring amazing things that we kind of have no concept of. And it's that just consistent ability to endure under extreme duress, which is what sort of now I define as courage. Few people here really realize that what it, how tough it is right. and, and, I mean, yeah. The, the heroism that they are, you know, that, that it almost becomes routine for them. Exactly. And we got to see them at a really unusual point, sort of in these, this pocket of four days when they know they're safe um, and trying to unwind as difficult as that could be after leaving a war zone, either in Iraq or Afghanistan. So we also, we, we, we wanted to show a side of these soldiers that you don't normally get a chance to see. Uh, I want to bring in uh, James Hunter, an army photographer who's in uh, the, the piece that you did, uh, who's currently serving in Iraq. He joins us now from Baghdad. Uh, James, thanks for being with us. Uh, you're welcome. Um, first of all, why did you, you decide to talk to, to these two young women? Well, me being a journalist and all, uh, when we talk to other soldiers about talking with the media, we always say, if you get the chance to talk to the media, always take it. Because if you're not going to tell, tell your story, then somebody else, then who is? I saw, I saw it as an opportunity to tell my side of the story and what I've seen in Iraq. So it wasn't just the fact that they were the only two women around. <laughs> no, I was, I was just kidding, James. Uh, um, um, <laughs> that was a little joke, that's right. Um, Actually, well, let me ask you about the R and R. How important is it to have something like that R and R? I mean, what t is it to, to be able to recharge at least for a couple of days? That, that's definitely it, recharging. That's that's where it's at. It's you get you get so spun up in everything that's going on, and you wear yourself out at some points. And being able to go on R and R and relax and just talk to other people and I guess hear everyone else's story, it really it definitely recharged me and it brought me back and I came back stronger. From the desert of the Middle East to the middle of the sea, if you want to know what life is really like in the Navy, this may be the best place to start, and it is a very long way from home. That story coming up.